the Lord. Ah, praise the Lord. Soon and very soon, your healing arrives. Soon and very soon, your salvation comes in Jesus' name. And soon and very soon, you will testify. I will testify. Tonight, the night of joy. Joy in heaven. Joy on earth. On your behalf. What are you, Father? We pray upon everyone here. Everyone online, there'll be joy, there'll be salvation, there'll be healing, there'll be deliverance. And Lord, I pray no one here, no one there will miss it in Jesus' name. Joy, joy, joy in your heart, in heaven, in your family. Lord, stamp it on everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. God has blessed you. You can sit down. Tonight, we come still talking about transformation. Tonight is restorative transformation of the prodigal. The resource of heaven the mercy of heaven to restore every prodigal prodigal son prodigal daughter prodigal adult prodigal elderly everyone that has strayed away strayed away from the path where the lord wants us to be prodigal there was even a prodigal prophet his name jonah there are prodigals prodigals everywhere prodigals in every community and tonight is the restoration and the transformation of the prodigal i'm reading from luke chapter 15 and i'm looking at verse 7 it says i say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons that need no repentance. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, likewise, I say, unto you there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner over one sinner that repenteth over one sinner that returns over one sinner that is restored over one sinner that says I make up my mind enough is enough enough of being a prodigal enough of being a person that went astray enough of a person that doesn't think right doesn't behave right doesn't act right and doesn't do anything right i'm coming back home you are coming back to the savior tonight amen, amen. And there will be a restoration. There will be a transformation. Restorative transformation of the prodigal. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, it says, For this my son was dead. And is alive again. Dead. Dead in sins and trespasses. But then the love of God and the forgiveness of God and the freedom that came to him now transformed him transformed him from death unto life he was lost and he is found 
and they began to be merry, happy, cheerful, joyful, celebrating the restoration and the salvation of the one that had gone astray and now has come back. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, it was necessary. It was needful. It was meet. It was right that we should make merry and be glad for this thy brother was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found now we've read about him now i'm preaching about you i'm bringing the love of god to you tonight the mercy of God to you tonight. The restoration, full restoration, free restoration. I'm bringing that restoration that's already noted in heaven. I'm bringing it to you tonight. You will be restored. From sin to the Savior, you will be restored. From the backslider to the believer, coming back to the lord tonight you will be restored your amen is dying down from sickness unto health you will be restored and from all the chains binding you from captivity and to total freedom you will be restored what's the person i'm talking about there restoration upon your life and everything you have lost internal external all around in your family in your profession in your total field of occupation everything you have lost there is restoration tonight in jesus name the restorative transformation of the prodigal there are three things we're looking at number one the restlessness and the recklessness of the prodigal slave actually the prodigal becomes a slave a slave to sell a slave to greed a slave to gambling a slave in the far country a slave under the man that got him something a slave to hunger a slave to confusion the man who goes away from the family of god becomes a slave the restlessness and the recklessness of the prodigal slave number two the repentance and the restoration of the penitent sufferer when we suffer many times the suffering will melt our heart the suffering will bring back the old time memory when things were good when things were peaceful when things were all things were provided and now we suffer and that suffering brings us to remembrance where we could have been what we could have been eating where we could have been living and the good good things we could have been having and that sometimes leads us to repentance to be penitent and to say I'll go by echo. number three, the recovery and the rejoicing in the personal salvation. Personal salvation. We now have that direct contact with the Heavenly Father. And we have the conversion. And we have the connection with the source of all goodness. And now, we have that salvation of the Lord personal and we have the recovery and 
the rejoicing because now we can say I am saved personal not that we are saved no salvation is personal repentance is personal restoration is personal conversion is personal and the salvation of the Lord that comes in our soul as we turn away from evil and turn unto the Lord the good Lord then we have that personal experience personal evidence and personal expression of salvation look at number one number one the restlessness and the recklessness of the prodigal slave we're looking at luke chapter 15 and i read from verse 11 and he said and he said is christ talking now a certain man had two sons verse 12 in verse 12 and the younger of them said unto his father father give me the portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them his living look at verse 13 in verse 13 and not many days after the younger son who became a slave slave to everything around him gathered all together and took his journey into a far country where the father will not see him where the mother will not be able to reach him he went it was not at the time of cell phone even at this time of cell phone if you don't want anybody to reach you and touch you and teach you there's a way you can put off that thing and nobody can reach you and the boy went into this far country and he wasted all the substance with righteous living righteous living dissipating living a kind of life that makes him enjoy life he just got some money and he squandered everything he squandered money he squandered his health he squandered his opportunities he squandered his life he gambled with life and lost everything all his substance as the lord has brought us into this world and we are born naturally he gives us what belongs to us a portion a brain a mind to think and there are people as they are growing up they waste the brain they waste the mind he gives us beauty in the flesh on the face in the body Many people, they waste all that. He gives us good lungs to breathe by smoking the ordinary cigarette. The smoke gets in, damages your lungs. And then by smoking marijuana, weeds, all the intelligence, all the brain, all the mind, it's affected by the things you smoke. And there are people that waste their lives by drinking. The problem is they drink, they drink, they drink, and the drinking will get to other parts of their body. And you see all that, uh, whatever is in the drink, is not for the body to mature, to grow very well, and to be healthy. And there are people that take drugs, drugs, hard drugs and they take all those drugs and then they waste virtually their lives other people get into you know immoral life and they have a fleshly carnal knowledge of that woman of that woman of that eventually they catch all this venereal disease some people have hiv aids 
It's because they became slaves. Slaves to the flesh. And slaves to substance. And slaves to everything around. And instead of their body, their mind, their emotion, their brain. And instead of everything good they have working for them. Everything now works against them. And it's still restless. It's like, if I didn't get it in the smoke, I'll get it in the drink. If I didn't get it in the drink, they're restless. They're searching, they're searching. How can I have satisfaction? How can I have this? And they keep on in their restlessness and they're reckless. The way they use their lives. They're reckless. The way they gamble with their lives. They're reckless in the way they gamble with the opportunity of getting to heaven. It's become a slave and eventually begins to cry, Who shall deliver me from this object and from this substance? But as long as the restlessness goes on, as long as the recklessness in your life goes on, there will be pain, there will be suffering. And that young man that went to the far country in his restlessness, searching and searching and searching, in his recklessness, going far and far and far to that other country, he kept on suffering. I pray that today will be your day salvation restoration and all that restlessness the lord will take away look at proverbs chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 16 in rome in rome proverbs chapter 4 we're looking at verse 16 for they sleep not except they have done mischief that's their restlessness and they say, I must do something to hurt somebody. I must do something to dig up somebody. I must do something to bring mischief. I must do something that the people around will know. There is a restless labor around. They are reckless in their action. They are thoughtless in their action. And in the things they do and the places they go, and the interactions they have, restless and reckless. It says, they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. They must hurt somebody. They must provoke somebody. They must annoy somebody. They must cut down somebody. They must push down somebody. It says in verse 17, verse 17, For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. We're looking at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 20, but... The wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, restlessness, and whose waters cast up mire and dirt. Look at Psalm 37. I'm reading from verse 7. Psalm 37, verse 7, it says, Rest in the Lord. Let all this restlessness. Let it stop all the agitation in the heart, in the mind. Let it stop all the things that make you sleepless, that fellow. I wanted to get to him today and do something that you will know I'm the son of my father. I didn't have the chance. And then you're rolling on the bed there. You're planning. Why are you so restless? Rest in the Lord and wait wait patiently for him they hurry to get money they hurry to build business they hurry to defile a lady they hurry to make a man fall and the restlessness and the planning it says fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way because of the man 
who bringeth wicked devices to pass. He's calling us to rest. He'll give you rest. I said he will give you rest. This is our young man who was in the far country. He spent everything he had. He wasted everything he had. He joined a rich man in that community. And that man sent him to a degrading, disgraceful job to feed swine. And then he had nothing to it. And his salary, his remuneration was not sufficient to keep him. He wanted to eat of the husks given to the swine. And the man warned him, the day you touch that, you know, that useless thing, will not even feed his body. You understand? Our body, our flesh is different from the body and the flesh of the pig. And what nourishes them will not nourish a body. It's like somebody looking at the feed that is given to chickens. It may feed those chickens, it will not nourish your body. It's like, you know, somebody looking at what cows eat. It may nourish them, but they are not made for the human body. Even if he was given, his health will still wane. His health will still vanish away. He became a slave by his own restlessness. My friend, your restlessness and your recklessness brings you to become a slave. A slave. And you are not free. But now we're looking at point number two. Point number two is the repentance and the restoration of the penitent sufferer. This man started suffering. And how many of us are suffering? And you know, sometimes the experts will tell us your problem is what you eat. And what you eat is eating you up your problem is what you drink and the drink is drinking sucking your blood your problem is your lifestyle and it's your lifestyle that is bringing the sickness and the suffering upon you and so the man realized I've been the one hurting myself. I've been the one destroying myself. Look at what he said in Luke chapter 15, verse 17. And when he came to himself, what does that mean? He was out of himself before. In recklessness, in restlessness, he lost his mind. He couldn't think. He couldn't think about the consequence of what he was doing. Now, he came to himself. Suffering brought his brain back. Suffering brought his mind back. Suffering makes him to sit down and think, why am I like this. Why did I get myself into this situation? This suffering is not because of witches and wizards. This is you. This suffering is not because of the village enemies. This is you. Your restlessness, your recklessness brought all this upon you and when he came to himself he said how many higher servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare and i perish with hunger in this place look at verse 18 i will arise and go to my father. I'm going to put shame aside, recklessness aside, thoughtlessness aside. Not thinking about your life, my friend. 
What you do today? Do you think of the repercussion tomorrow? Lady there, what you do today? Do you think of the result, the ruin on your life tomorrow? And then, here am I now. I want to talk to you. And as I want to talk to you, dodge your head. Why? Why don't you come back to yourself and say, This preacher knows me. It's like she's pointing at me. I will listen. Let somebody help me shout there. I will listen. Say it well. Because of that, he said, I will arise. It's a personal decision. I took the decision in my recklessness. I left home. I left the father. I left the goodness of the home. And I left the goodness of the creation of God. Since I took that decision by myself, and I came this far, and I've literally destroyed myself. I'm going to take the decision to go back. If I know the way from the father to the far country, that same road will lead me home. That same road, the road you took to become a slave, prodigal slave. That same road you will take as a penitent sufferer and come back home. Thank God. Welcome. You are back. I said you are back. The man said I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him father I have sinned. That's the beginning of turning an out in your life. Not that my elder brother pushed me to thinking of going far away. Not that the home condition pushed me to go in away. Not that my friends, my gang, my colleagues, my whatever, they pushed me to it. Nobody pushed me. I was reckless. Nobody pushed me. I was restless. I have sinned against heaven. And before thee, that the repentance that that man manifested. And when you begin to repent, the end of your suffering has come. Look at Hosea chapter 14. In Hosea chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 1. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God. For thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. It's your iniquity. It's your sin. It's your transgression that made you fall into a condition like this. Young man. Young woman. Lady. Look at where you are. And it's your transgression. It's your evil. And it's your sin that made you to become like this after the sinfulness where the self-respect after the sinfulness what where is the honor they used to have after the transgression where is the dignity of the woman that you ought to have what is the dignity of the man after people have seen and you know they look at you like this Dignity is gone. Self-respect is gone. And even for you, the confidence you used to have, everything is gone. Israel, return unto the Lord thy God. Praise the Lord, your return. Yeah. And it says, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Look at verse 2. It says in verse 2, Take with you was what a good God is even teaching us what to say and how to say it when we come to him. Take with you was and turn to the Lord, say unto him, Take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. 
We don't come with any marriage. We only come for grace. We come for mercy. We come for his love. The love that never dies. So will we render the calves of our lips. Look at verse 3 there. In verse 3 it says, Asher shall not save us. All the other things we have depended upon in our foolishness. The reckless man is foolish. And the reckless woman is foolish. In our foolishness we thought money will save we thought man will save we thought all these things around us by our own strength our own connection they will save they have ruined us asher shall not save us we will not ride upon horses neither will we say any more to the work of our hands ye are our gods for in thee god the fatherless will find mercy thank god tonight you'll find mercy yeah. and the court of his mercy is thrown at you no matter how deep you are in that well of destruction that cord of mercy will pull you up. Look at Jeremiah chapter 31. I'm reading from verse 20. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 20. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child for sins? I speak against him. I do earnestly remember him still. Understand? Is Jonah my servant? Is gone to another place from the place I sent him? Is now in the whale's belly. And God was still thinking about him. Is Manasseh my son? Did I put him as king over the land? But he has refused all the words of the prophets. And now the enemy is coming with the hook and with the chain of thorns. And Manasseh cried, because I still remember him. Therefore, my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely, I will surely, I will surely have mercy upon him, says the Lord. Amen. Did you hear that one? Amen. What is your amen? And our suffering, the Lord is saying, He remembers you still. And tonight is the night of mercy in your life. In Ezekiel chapter 18, Ezekiel chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 4. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The soul that sinneth, it brings the death penalty against himself. God did not want him to die, but his sin led him to death and destruction. Any solution? Yes. The solution has come. What's the solution? Look at Vastachi. In Vastachi, it says, Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. But then he says, repent, look at God. He says, I will judge you. I will judge you. And I will lay my suffering on you. And again, he remembers mercy. And immediately he said, I will judge. He said, but 
we can cancel the judgment right here now. And your judgment can be cancelled right here now. Your punishment can be cancelled right here now. Your suffering can be taken away right here now. How? Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. If you are ruined, understand, it's not the will of God. If you are ruined, understand, it is not the plan of God that ruined you. It is your sin. It is your iniquity. Say so. Iniquity shall not ruin you. It says repent. Repent. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, it says, cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit for why will you that look at God? God has said, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. And then God turns and says, But why will you die? I made you for life. I made you for abundant life. I made abundant life for you. I made you for eternal life. I made eternal life for you. Why will you die? When there is mercy, when there's forgiveness, when there's grace, when there is salvation, why will you die? You will not die. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, for I have no pleasure in the death of him that died. God says, I'm not interested in your death. I'm not interested in your judgment. I'm not interested in your emptiness. I'm not interested in blowing you down, cutting you down, and throwing you away. He says, I have no pleasure in the death of him that died. He says, says the Lord God, wherefore turn yourselves and leave ye. You will live. Yeah. My brother, my sister, I said, you will live. Yeah. You live a bright, a bright life, a forgiving life, an assured life. You will live in Jesus' name. Yeah. Look at number three. Here's the connection that brings you to that life. Because now we have the recovery and the rejoicing in the personal salvation. The recovery and the rejoicing in the personal salvation. And look at Luke chapter 15, and we're reading from verse 23. And bring him hither, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, for this my son was dead. He was dead to my voice. He was dead to my pleading. He was dead to my mercy. He was dead to my goodness. He was dead to my invitation. He was dead, but now he is alive. Transformation has taken place. Transformation will take place in your life. He was lost. He was lost. And the, the whistle was being blown, but he blew his ears until he became lost. He was lost and is found. And he says, and they began to be merry. Your life will bring joy in your family. Your family that has been hanging their head, <laughs> look at this boy. And we took him to church in fact. We took him to deeper life when he was young. And he used to lead a family devotion. But now look at her boy. Look at this girl. We brought her up in the way of the Lord. And he knows the, she knows the scripture. And she used to even coach the scriptures. And when mommy was sick, I remember uh, that particular year. And mommy was always giving, almost giving up. It was the girl that will quote the promise of 
of God and say, Mommy, don't you remember this? Don't you remember this? But this girl that was spiritual, this girl that appeared special, this girl that she used to be an encouragement to everybody in the family, she's gone far away. But now you are dead, you'll come alive. You are lost, but you'll be found. It tells us in Psalm 51. Psalm 51. I'm looking at verse 12. Psalm 51, verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. There is joy in salvation. There is joy in forgiveness. There is joy in recovery. There is joy in the new life. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. And then with that rejoicing comes recovery. I said, comes recovery. Yeah. Look at this man we're talking about. Malnutrition has taken over his life because he had nothing good to eat. Malnutrition and weakness and impotence is not up to 40 years. It's looking like 67 it's looking like somebody very old it's not up to 37 and he's looking and walking like a man of 82 years of age why malnutrition has done the work why the suffering has done the work where was he sleeping when he was taking care of the hawks when he was taking care of the swine he was living where uh, mosquitoes will come malaria talk of malaria talk of fire talk of a typhoid fever and talk about everything but now he came back home and as he came back home this man in one day is going to get well and this my friend there one day one night you are going to get well. Look at Psalm 103, Psalm 103. I'm reading from verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Look at verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Look at verse 3 there. In verse 3, O forgiveth all thine iniquities who healeth all thy diseases and the young man came home the father did not say sit down there i need to talk to you no his conscience has spoken to him already the suffering has spoken to him or the hunger has spoken to him already all that the father offered now is new life new clothing new food everything new you have been forgiven tonight is your night of forgiveness no remembrance of anything that prodigal slave did before who forgiveth all thine iniquities and look at this who healeth all thy diseases how many diseases were god healed from you everything all all from the top of your head to the tip of your toe healing will come to you tonight in jesus jeremiah chapter 17 tells us of the personal salvation and of the personal soundness in the body heal me o lord and i shall be healed save me and i shall be saved for thou art my praise your time has come your salvation has come your forgiveness has now come heal me O lord and i shall be healed save me and i shall be saved can you say that with me save me save me and i shall be saved heal me 
and I shall be healed. Your time has now come. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Think about your life. What the restlessness and the recklessness has brought you into. And you say, yes, I understand. I'm now coming back to the fountain of my salvation, to Christ, for forgiveness, for freedom, for redemption, for transformation. And anywhere you are, you are there, you want that salvation of the Lord, please raise up your hand. God bless you. God bless you. This is your day. That's your day. That God is going to forgive and God is going to save. And it will save you from all the things ruining your life right now. As you raise up your hand in the name of the Lord, please stand up. There is no God bless you there. God bless you there. God bless you there. There is joy in heaven because of you right now. Just stand up where you are there. Look at the past. The Lord wants to wipe away the past. He wants to give you a kind of restorative transformation. As we're standing up, just tell the Lord in one word, in one sentence, Lord, I'm sorry for going so far from you. I now come back to you. I know you love me. Say that. I know you want to forgive me, say that. I bring myself completely under your loving care into your salvation. Save me, Lord, and I believe I am saved. Save me, I believe I am saved. I'm going to pray with you now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, who has said, whosoever comes to him, will in no wise cast out. This, a brother, this, a sister, this, our son, this, our daughter, they have all come unto you now. Receive them, forgive them in Jesus' name. Give them a present day salvation, personal salvation, pardoning salvation, forgive all the sins they have ever committed. And let the joy of salvation come into their hearts now. And let there be joy in heaven over every one of them here at the Alpha location, there, online, everywhere. We're connected, we're connected, listening to the word and listening to the prayer now. Let the joy of salvation fill every heart. Thank you, Lord. It is done. It is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. I am saved. Say it well now. I am saved. It's confirmed in Jesus' name. We we'll call on our moderate and overseer tonight to lead us in this counseling session. And then after that, I come back. You will heal all your diseases in Jesus' name. Pastor, please. All of you who raised your hand, you who stood up, please, can you see standing up there? Uh, counselors, please spread yourselves. The lords of the school are in the tent over there by my right. Let some go over there and uh, towards uh, the back of this uh, uh, building. A lot of our people are there raising up their hands there. So please, let's spread ourselves and get to the back. Let's do that now. And those who stood up, remember, you have taken the greatest decision you could take in your life. 
The Lord has been gracious to you to save you. Be happy about that. Be excited about that. And be willing and ready to give all the information that our people are asking you to give to them. Be honest. You're now born again. You won't deceive anymore. You won't tell lies anymore. And so wherever you are, stand where you are. Be interested in giving your details to the people that are counseling you there. Our counselors, you don't need to go on preaching anymore. All that you need is to get the details from them. Uh, the Lord will help them as we follow up on them. Please keep standing. Please be excited in giving your details. If the, the counselors are not close to you, try as much as possible to draw closer to them. It's for your own good to help you to make progress in the decision they have taken tonight to follow the Almighty God, to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. So our counselors, let's be quick about that. That's the greatest of the things for which the Lord has brought us here. And so please, let's do all we can at this time to make sure that we get to them, get their details, and those of you who are giving the details, be honest and sincere and write in a way that your name could be well read and spelt so that visiting you, following up, you up will not be difficult. Uh, ushers, please, our uh, counselors, please, let's be fast. If they can write for themselves and by themselves, please help them, let them do that. If they can write, it's okay. But if they cannot write, help them to do that. Please, let's be fast. Let's be fast. Look around. Remember, I told you, we have by my right there, the tent over there. People are there. A lot of them, I'm sure, many of them over there will have given them life to Christ. And that is what we are interested in. In doing at this moment, let's follow them up. Let's go on wherever we find them. And uh, the ones who have just taken the decision to follow Jesus this night, I think if I wear in your own shoe, I will make sure I run after them if they are not close to me. Make sure you do that. That's an indication that your decision, it came from your heart. That's an indication is spared up by the Spirit of God. So make sure that your name is here. Your name is here. And remember tomorrow, all of you who have given your life to Christ will be having a lunch hour fellowship with Christ tomorrow by 3 p.m. 3 p.m. tomorrow, we will be having lunch hour fellowship just at the direction I'm, I'm pointing at. By 3 p.m., let's be there. If you are watching online, and you have given your life to Christ after listening to the message and pastor's message, uh, prayer. You have a link there, gckhq.org slice, slice uh, uh, connect below your player. Please visit it and fill out the form so we can use that in following up and helping you to stand on the decision I made tonight. If you are online, just link that, assess that, gckhq.org slash connect. Assess that form and fill it, and so that that will help us to follow you still, to make you strong in the Lord. But if you have listened to the radio or television, you have a phone number there, that's uh, plus two, three, four, Nine one five four 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 nine two three six. Again, plus two three four nine one five triple four nine two six three. So please, you can use that SMM, SMM, SMS, and send your name, your phone number and your local address so that following you up will not be difficult. Please, our counselors, let's be quick. The man of God is waiting for you now. 
Let's round up. Let's be fast about that. And those of you who have given your life to Christ and you are waiting for prayer, I think this is the time to look unto the Lord and say, God, remember me tonight. That's the reason why the man of God was sent to you. You begin to tell the Lord, I am ready. I am expectant. I know that something will happen to me. And as you continue to focus on Christ and focus on him alone, when the man of God comes, your case is going to come on hand. And by the grace of God, you will rejoice tonight. But don't shake. Don't just you know, be laughing around. Make sure you are looking unto the Lord and asking for grace to receive from the Lord tonight. Our counselors, wherever you are, please, let's fast if you are finished. And you know you are finished where you are. Can you join the other ones who are still having a lot to do in their hands? Let's go back and back and back and make sure that wherever the people have answered the altar call, by the grace of God, let's be there to see how to help them. You have taken good decision. By the special grace of God, you will stand. You have taken good decision by the grace of God that has brought you into the kingdom, you are going to stand. There is nothing the enemy could do to push you over. All that you do, do all that you ought to do to make sure that you are followed up by giving your details. Remember again, those who are online and are lifting online, we have told you the link there that you have to, you know, touch so that the forms to fill and give us the details uh, will be received. Uh, that's GCKHQ dot org slash connect. You can do that. And those of you from the television or radio, you have a phone number there, plus 234-91544-49263. You can do that. And remember that tomorrow we will be having the lunch hour fellowship with Christ tomorrow by 3 o'clock here in the Alpha location at that uh, tent there. There will also be a special banquet for all those who have given themselves to Christ all throughout this crusade on the 5th of May, globally, all over the world. And so wherever you, have, uh, you, know, you, are, you are and you have given your life to Christ, you are going to be treated in a very great banquet on the, on the fifth uh, Sunday, uh, precisely that the Sunday following us now, you will be there, and by the grace of God, as many message you are going to receive from the convener, and all other things you need there to help you to stand will be given unto you. Here in the Alpha location, the locations where you are going to meet will be made known to you later. So please, Let's be quick in taking the decision now. If you are finished where you are, and uh, you are finished the road where you are, please can you wave the flag at us here. Where you are, you are finished. Yes, we can see one by my right there. Yes, we can see another one by the extreme left there. But down, down, if you are there, please wave it wide. So, okay, thank you. All the areas... Watch of the line directly in front of me here. If you are finished, can we see your flag up? Can we see the... Okay, thank you. And all the our people who are over there, please, those who are going to detent there, after taking their details, you don't need to leave there. You stay there because you are going to bring the people God is going to touch by his mighty power tonight. And so you can help them to bring them along when the time comes. But meanwhile... Let's be very fast in taking the details and let's know when you finish so that the man of God will come again and open heaven for every one of us to enjoy the message of God tonight. Please, wherever you are, do it quickly. Do it quickly. Let me see the flags again flying. Thank you. Thank you. Please, if there's anywhere 
You can still come to the front because we can't see very clearly from here where you are. It's very far. If you can quickly walk out, walk and come from the eye where you are and walk to the front so that we can know we have really gotten the names of all those who gave their lives, that will be all right for us. Please, if you can leave where you are now, come towards the front, that will help us to know that you are finished. Thank you. Please say the fast about it. Remember, we are waiting, okay? We are waiting for miracles. If you are waiting for miracles, say amen. amen. If you are the one that the man of God came for, to give you that special touch and blessings, if you know you are the one, can you shout amen? amen. All over the world. He is here in Alpha location about here to send the healing of our God to you wherever you are. And by the grace of God, you will rejoice. You will never, never have experienced what you are going to experience in your life tonight. Yes, all those ones, can we see them? Now we are seeing that you already concluded. And can we all rise up? Let's rise up wherever we are. And lift up your hand unto God and say, God, I'm here. I'm waiting for you. The man of God is already at hand. We live here for him to open heaven for us. Amen. Amen. The Lord has been waiting for you. Amen. Now your time must come. Amen. Healing. Amen. Deliverance. Amen. There's no exception tonight. The mercy of God will bring that healing to your body right there. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just raise up one hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge. That sickness you see now, you'll see it no more in Jesus' name. Pain, you see that no more in Jesus' name. Infirmity, you'll see that no more in Jesus' name. This crusade was put together because of you. You will not miss your miracle. One hand up, the other hand upon yourself. Father, God of mercy, God of love, God of power, Lord, we pray you come in your mercy and compassion. Touch your people. Everyone without exception, touch them, heal them in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray nobody will miss the miracle of mercy tonight Amen. there is nothing we do there is no marriage we don't pay money we don't cry we don't pay with tears nothing by mercy by grace your healing has come to everyone Amen. lord i pray all those long-standing sicknesses diseases touch them Heal them in Jesus' name. The pain, I command you, go out in Jesus' name. The bleeding, go out in Jesus' name. The swelling, go out in Jesus' name. The cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Also be healed in Jesus' name. And all that uh, breathing problem, Lord, I pray that you take it away now in Jesus' name. And near be healed in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray the one that is having the terminal, a kind of sickness, and the experts have said, there's no way, there's a way today. There is healing today. Lord, 
the God of mercy. Touch everyone. Heal them in Jesus' name. HIV AIDS, you are healed in Jesus' name. And your spinal cord that is bent and you couldn't stand up, I pray healing, miracle, deliverance comes upon you right now. Stand up erect in Jesus name the crutches in your hand the Lord take that away and give your ankle and give your knee and give your your bone strength to stand and to walk I pray that insanity will vanish away now in Jesus name mercy Mercy, mercy brings healing, deliverance to everyone. The young and the old, the boy and the girl, the mama and the papa. Everyone to experience that healing right now. To the right, to the left, to the center, at the back, on the radio over the television, online, everywhere, healing everywhere. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My brother is healed. Thank you, Lord. My sister, my daughter is healed. Thank you, Lord. We are healed. I am healed. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done.